So welcome back to the program, and we've got um, John Stevens and Dizzy Reed here from the Dead Daisies. Um, guys, we're in on a tour bus in Nottingham. I was going to start by asking you, John, um, last four years, the odds were against you ever getting here, <laughs> um, we, right from an illness, uh, for, you yeah. know, um, I suppose a, a joust with death, really, yeah. four years ago, and then being chased by a crocodile at the start of this tour. Um, can you just run us through that? Uh, yeah, well, four years ago, I had double heart bypass surgery after going to the doctor for a checkup. So, you know, anybody who listens to this and thinks they can get away with it and not go to the doctor, if you're feeling bad, go to the doctor. Saved mm -hmm. my life anyway. Um, so, yeah, roll forward four years, and, you know, a year ago we started the Dead Daisies, and, uh, yeah, we were touring America a few months ago, and prior to that, I, you know, yeah, I was catching some mud crabs, and a croc came up and frightened me. <laughs> and, I, and you had to I do the and fell over and <laughs> broke my leg and broke my thumb. And you had to do how, how long did that take to heal? Uh, I went to America with a broken leg and a broken thumb. I was in hospital for four days. Went straight from hospital onto a plane to New York to start the tour. And you know, I kind of had no excuse because my voice, voice worked fine. I was just in a wheelchair the whole time because mm. I couldn't even be on crutches because of my thumb mm. for a <laughs> couple of months. It's pretty hairy, wasn't it, Dizzy? Hey, you know what? <clears throat> you were heroic, John. I gotta say, <laughs> it was it was amazing. And, uh, just good to see him back on two feet, man. And Dizzy, can you just run us through how you got involved in this project? Um, how did I get involved? You know, I uh, Richard had told me about it. And I'd met John in the past, and I'd met Marco Mendoza, who was playing bass at the time, and um, he mentioned that he was he was he was doing a tour with them down in Australia, and, I, and the first question that came out of my mouth was, "Do they need a keyboard player?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you know they're cats that I. I always wanted to play with or love playing with and so um somehow my name got thrown in the mix when they came to the states and they called us and it worked out and i said yes is it, is, i'm here with uh dizzy reed and john stevens from the dead daisies and uh, we're talking about uh, being on tour and i suppose you played a big festival in, in the u.s um before before you c came here what was it like just going in front of that crowd they didn't know who you were um was it the best way to sort of road test the songs to see what sort of reaction you got it's the only way to road test your songs is get out there and play them and ah. uh, you know we had the good fortune to be invited on that tour and uh, you know it was hot and hot in midsummer there in America and uh, it was great to um, be out on the road mm. playing with this group of people playing those songs you know and and watching fans or just watching people going wow what's that mm -hmm. you know, being engaged and then you know further you know sort of I guess getting getting the album and coming fans. You must find it interesting to read what, and I'm sure you always do when you release music, what other people think of it. Yeah, but but how would how would you describe it? I mean, how would you describe, you know, where Dead Daisies are musically? Did you have an aim? Did you have a, a mark you wanted to hit? Um, uh, you know, what was it, what was the inspiration in that room when you wrote most of those songs with David? To finish them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, when we did the album, we were, we were under a 12-day deadline, so, mm. you know, you, you're just trying to do the best you can, and, and you know, in that sort of uh, confinement of putting it, putting the clock on yourself, because, mm. you know, I've been, I've been spent months and months and months and months in the studio making records, and, mm -hmm. you know, you can get just get caught up your own backside, and, you mm. know, the fact that, you know, you're under a clock, mm. you, you actually have to just deal with it and pull it out, and it forces you to, to make decisions decisions on things really fast without procrastinating on, on things and overthinking things. Mm. So, you know, therefore, you know, I kind of like, I kind of like that mm. kind of vibe. Mm. It keeps it really focused. Have you guys been writing new stuff on the road? Yes, we have. We actually recorded uh, three new songs in the middle of the, the last tour. Mm. And um, I think we, were, we, we do good under pressure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we had three, three, two and a half days in New York we tracked, and then we had three days in LA to finish all the uh, the vocals and, and, and overdubs and to write, finish writing the lyrics and stuff. And we we're playing all those three songs in the set. Mm. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> is this is this a band like I suppose people will look at it as a super group and maybe think that the the roster is going to be a rotating roster with various players coming in and out? Is is that the way you in, envisage it, John? Oh no, I'd love to have all these guys stay permanently, but I think Mick Jagger might have a problem with Daryl Jones, and yeah. I think Axel might have a problem you know, with Dizzy and, and Richard staying. So. You know, um, every, you know, we're all, we're all grown ups, and everyone has their day jobs and and their their things. So you know, the Dead Daisies, 
probably provides a little uh, uh, haven and escape, creative haven, mm. um, if they're available. Mm. And, and if we're, we're I mean, David and I aren't doing anything at the time, you know, mm. on the road or whatever. But if we're creating, I mean, you know, it's, we've already we've already proved within this structure of this band, these members, that we can create together, and that's really important for the f for moving forward, you know, mm -hmm. in the future. We'll pick another song in a minute, so I'll give you a bit of a warning. But Dizzy, I, I saw an interview with Bumblefoot <laughs> recently where he said, as soon as I plan a a solo tour or a solo show, then GNR announce something, and then I have to change my plans. How much do you know going forward? What your commitments are, and, and what you know, what have you got coming up? What's on the horizon? You know, I'm just so happy to be able to play music for a living. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just love playing with these guys. And, yeah, and I'm I'm still you know like playing with GNR mm. a lot, and mm. uh, so I think there's some things coming up. But uh, you know what? We got a we got a show tonight. Yeah, that's right. And uh, we got three more shows, and then we're off to Israel for some more shows. Cool. And they're, I'm looking forward to They're all going to be great. Okay. Final part of the interview now with uh, uh, John Stevens and Dizzy Reed. You guys, you, I mean, we started off talking about how long you've been around. Uh, how much has touring changed? I mean, like the routine, I mean, from when you first started touring, um, Nothing, well, what, 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 how much has nothing, changed? Nothing's changed. You still got to get up there on stage and deliver. Mm -hmm. So that, so nothing changes as far as that's concerned. I mean, obviously, you know, but doing the dead daisies, you know, we're in the trenches and we're doing our thing, and 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 it's and it's great fun. But we're not like eighteen anymore. Mm -hmm. anymore but, you know, it's still that thrill of getting up and and giving it your best because you know all you've got is that moment in time. Mm -hmm. And when it lines up, when all the play, when everybody lines up on that stage and it, and it feels great. And it's going great. It's nothing better. Mm -hmm. it's, really, it's just really quite uh, intoxicating when it's all working. Now I was going to also ask you about your the first ever multiple choice music video. You, you had a you know at the end of the music video for Lock and Load, you get do does he live or does he die or how wh where did the idea for that come from? Not from me. <laughs> but you know I was quite happy for him to die. <laughs> <laughs> he dies, I haven't, I haven't you have a choice. You can, you, can, you can kill him or, you know. That was the thing with the video. But, That's look, the, empowering. Uh, the lock and load, I mean, the song, what it's, what it's about, is a pretty heavy subject, and we thought we'd just make a, you know, make a video that wasn't, wasn't that heavy, even though mm. he dies in the end. Mm. It wasn't that literal as the song is. If you delve into the song, it's really quite mm. a disturbing sort of song. But, yeah, it is, yeah. But so we didn't want to really depict that in the, in the video by making it, you know that obvious so you know get a couple of a young the bloke that looks like me when I was 17 <laughs> oh no <laughs>